relevant, reliable, and researched. This is Experts on Call, the show focused on delivering leading edge news and information on today's most beneficial products and services. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Welcome back to the program. It's Key Pacific's Talk About Strata here on AM650. I'm Sterling Fox. My co-host is the Vancouver Province condo columnist and executive director of the Condominium Homeowners Association of BC, Tony Juventu. Tony, we were talking about depreciation reports just before the break, and you mentioned uh, just a few weeks ago, December 13th, was a significant deadline in the whole depreciation report rollout because now we've passed the point where it's optional. As every strata council in BC is supposed to have one unless, and can they still vote not to have one? Uh, they can't. They can't. The three-quarters vote exemption to exempt yourself from the report still applies. Uh, It's an exemption that you have to pass annually. Okay. Right? So you have your AGM in November. You pass an exemption to do the report. Um, Then again, next November, you have to pass the same exemption. What's to be gained from dodging the the depreciation report, Tony? Well, we have 28,000 variations of buildings in the province. There are going to be buildings where it might not even be economically purposeful to have a report. For example... um, Every, every building that's five units or more automatically has to have a report unless you exempt. Well, you could have a five-unit bare land strata that gets some, um, each you, where each strata lot gets direct service of water and sewer from the city. So there's absolutely nothing in common. Right. Right. They have, they have, they don't have a common roadway. They have no common property. And other than an annual insurance policy, they have nothing in common. Um, there's no real benefit on that type of a strata to have a depreciation report because each owner is responsible for their own unit. So after, after as of rather, December 13th, we're only three weeks ago. Yes. What's changed? What What's now become regulatory that was optional up until December 13th? Well, the first two-year window when the legislation first came in was kind of an amnesty period, right? It was a preparation period where it gave everybody a deadline. It says, look, over the next two years, you have this time window. Um, Become, but by the end of the day on December 13th, you're going to have to have a report. Effective December 14th, 2013, you're, you will have an obligation for any strata that existed as of December 14th, 2011 or earlier. Okay. Every strata corporation must have a report done. Um, and the December 14th, 2011 date just applies to new developments. So we'll, we'll tackle that in a second. All right. But the, um, so what happens is it's, it's like an exemption. If, if we passed an exemption last November... Uh, or in, and, and then this November in 2014, we don't pass an exemption. We must get a report done in six months. Okay. So this December 13th. That's now law in BC. That's, that's now law in BC. Okay. So this December 13, 14 trigger did the same thing. If by December 13th, we had not passed an exemption, we're now in the window that we must have the report. Um, and best case, best guess scenario is you have six months to get it. And, and there are no strata police. Nobody's coming after you saying right. we don't have a report. But there is a bigger problem in the fact that if you don't have a report and you haven't exempted yourself and you're not complying with the legislation, um, you're going to have some complications when you're doing things like filling out a form B. Um, what are you going to answer? We've exempted ourselves? No. We've got a report? No. How do we explain this information to buyers? Uh, and we're going to find buyers are going to be, which we're already seeing, in a situation where they can't sell property without a report. Well, and, and so it should be. I mean, given the cost of, of a condo or strata property anywhere in British Columbia, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Any conscientious buyer should certainly be curious, I would think, at the very least, Tony, to see one of those reports, to get a clue as to what's coming in terms of, well, uh, I'm going to be, I'm now buying into this. I become a, a shareholder in, in all the costs. That's so right. a clue or two as to what costs are coming down the pike would be smart, especially before you sign a Again, on that dotted line. Well, and for new developments, it's just as valuable. It's not just about when the big things come through, but we have a lot of other things that get captured, things like warranty. We have warranty windows and time periods for warranty. Who's monitoring those? Um, have they been processed? Um, you know, have we done warranty inspections before the five-year warranty was up? You know, we have, we have a lot of issues. Um, on new developments, the Strata Corporation has to make a decision at their by their second AGM as to whether they will get a report done or exempt. Okay. Right? So, so for a new development, 
development, that's the compliance period. And, um, you know, I, I think everybody was hoping that it would be a situation where the developer would have to provide um, a report um, to the new buyers. But most buildings are pre-sales, and many of them aren't finished entirely True. until well into the first year. Yes. So it's almost impossible to provide the report for, in, in, a, in a complete capacity in any case. Okay. So by the second AGM um, is a compromise. It's, been, it's, a, it's a solution. Be ideal, though, for buyers. Think about it as a buyer. You're buying into a new building. I'd like to know the quality of the roof going on that building. I would too. Yeah. Is it going to be a 13-year roof, an 18-year roof, a 35-year roof? You know, what What am I actually buying? And and let's talk about it in, in the context of newer buildings, brand new or almost new buildings, because the tendency would be to go, well, yeah, I want to go to one of those because it's brand new. Chances are there's not going to be any major repairs required for probably, with a little bit of luck, 15, 20 years, maybe 10 at the very least. So... Are, are all strata properties in British Columbia, Tony, required by law to have contingency funds set aside for emergency repairs? And if so, in the case of a brand new building, how do they determine what a contingency fund is going to be given that there aren't any repairs likely? Well, contingency fund um, is for your long-term planning for both your depreciation report and any emergency. So you and start on day right? one of a new building, you're setting that money aside, it, so it's no shock when uh, repair is needed. Well, and even though the owner-developer has to seed the fund um, for the first budget anyhow. Mm. So there is money there to be able to deal with cash flow issues, emergencies, those types of issues. Um, but we certainly see new buildings where 12 years into the building, they need a new roof. Yeah. The roof... You know, when people are buying into new buildings, no one's looking at the roof. Right. Uh, and the roof is a, you know, it's a huge asset. It's the one asset that covers 99% of all of your other assets. Sure, sure. Right? And so, you know, there are potential for major costs. Um, as a new development by the second or third year, you certainly will want to get a depreciation report. And the biggest reason is predictability. If we get a depreciation report um, early on, we can start saving earlier, which means it'll have the least amount of impact on our strata fees. Okay. Right? If we if we if we know that over um, 25 years we need three million dollars for our basic upgrades and renewals on our building, um, if we wait till the building is 20 years old, then we've got to come up with three million dollars in five years. Right. If we start when the building's only five years old, we get to spread that out over 20 years. And is is there law? Is there strata law that says every council has got to set aside a certain percentage of money every year? The minimum just to have that to stand by. No. The legislative minimum is only 10% of the annual budget to a minimum of 25% of the budget. So really, stra uh, most strata corporations, regardless of age, do not have more money in the reserves than their actual annual operating budget. Okay. Which is, which is bleak because an annual operating budget um, is frequently not very much. All the more reason. To, to get that depreciation report and have, again, a clue, some kind of indicator that, okay, we're fine now, but mm -hmm. in three years, uh, we're likely going to need to repave the driveway to the parkade. And in four years, we're going to have to replace the boiler system and all the hot water. And on and on it goes. It never stops. Well, and if we're doing something like a roof, like, you know, let's say our report is projecting that we need a new roof um, in September of this year. Um, we probably should have started last year in September, October, having building inspections done on, on our um, roofing system so we know what the condition of the roof is. Do right. we really need it a year from now? Right. Can we can we extend it a bit longer or should we be speeding it up, right? The, the other side of that, of course, is if we plan well in advance and we actually get into um, an inspector who does our specs for us, um, we go out for bids, we've got a long time to schedule it, the contractors have predictability, right. we get much better competitive pricing. Sure. We get to call the time period period, would you sooner have a roof put on your building in August in this province or November? <laughs> no kidding. Right? Or January. Well, and, yet? and something, you know, uh, if you are in an emergency situation, whoever is coming in to remedy that situation has got you over a barrel and they get to charge whatever they want and you're happy to pay it. And you'll be paying just because it's an emergency 10 to 30 percent more. Yeah. You know, it's that, that it's one of the economic failures that we have um, in, in our culture is that we wait till most most building products fail before we replace them. Mm. Deck repairs, you know, deck membranes. Every year they should be inspected. That depreciation report not only tells you the future, 
but it gives you a really good sense um, of what you should be doing every year. Um, uh, we've just loaded on our website um, a program, a facilities management program, which is a series of schedules. Anybody can load it. Just go down, uh, go on the site, uh, click on the workbook schedules. Um, it pops up with a whole bunch of PDF to Excel formulas for you. You can enter into each of the different schedules, things like annual inspections. Um, oh, so you can just use the service template. Service reports, then, right? records. Okay. It, and save it to your desktop, and it's programmed that any Strata Corporation can use. And by the way, the Condominium Homeowners Association website is CHOA, C-H-O-A dot B-C dot C-A. It is a fabulous website. Let's get back to the mailbag here, Tony. We promised we'd get a few of those emails included in the program. And this one is from Armin, who is a Strata owner from upcountry, who would ask a very simple question. Is there a suggested <coughs> or regulated temperature for common hallways in the wintertime. Some of those buildings can get a little drafty, Tony. Is there? Well, it's an interesting um, issue because uh, most buildings that have hallway pressurization systems also have heaters attached to them. Mm -hmm. So the first question needs to be asked, are the heaters actually working on and functioning? They they will be ambient temperature. They will not be room temperature. Sure. Right? That's not, it's not the intention is to heat the building and to heat your unit. The intention, the, the purpose is to provide a maintain, maintainable, stable, ambient temperature to prevent things from pipes freezing. Sure. From condensation buildup, yep. those types of things. Um, it, it provides um, air circulation, fresh air introduction into the building. Um, it also provides hallway pressurization. So things like food odors, um, smoke from units um, uh, don't um, uh, migrate into other parts of the building. Um, people put door sweeps on the bottom of their doors to stop the air from coming in because yes. they don't like the cold air coming in. Exactly. And doing that, that creates problems for the hallway pressurization system. System, right? Don't do that. It's intended to provide fresh air and to create pressure within your unit. You know, we, we have people who say, well, you know, my unit backdrafts um, smoke or cooking odors through my ventilation system in my kitchen. Well, right. yes, it does, because you put a hallway sweep on your door and you prevented the air from coming into your unit. I can't believe how many apartments and, and just visiting friends and stuff, and they have that, that thing, and the, you screw it onto the bottom of the door, yeah. and, and it actually closes the gap between the bottom of the drawer, door and the sill. Yes. And that's not supposed to be there. In most buildings, it's not intended. Interesting. For that. I had no idea. Yeah. So I see it all the time. Well, so you have to you have to find out what the purpose of your hallway pressurization system is. Also, you know, they're not they're not always for the same purpose. Some of them are heated, some are not. Um, they need to be maintained regularly. And what they really need is they have filtration systems on them. The filters need to be changed almost monthly. Most of them will get clogged um, and they will start to just simply pump debris into the building. They'll run very inefficiently. They'll consume higher levels of energy. Um, if, if they're maintained and cleaned regularly, they should perform well for the building. And they can provide an ambient level of temperature in your building. So in response to Armin's question, is there a suggested or regulated temperature temperature for common hallways during winter? The short answer is no. No, but it's generally around 62 degrees, right, 60 right. degrees, something that's reasonable. What you want to be careful of, you're not pumping unheated cold air into building systems where you have exposed things like plumbing facilities that could freeze. And if you're in the interior up north or at one of the resort properties, that could be a greater problem. You also have to monitor snow removal from the intakes as well. Right. Arvin, thanks for your email. Lots more uh, in the bag that we're going to pull out and uh, deal with here on Key Pacific's Talk About Strata as we do our first show of 2014. He's Tony Juventu. I'm Sterling Fox, and we'll be right back. Delivering relevant and beneficial consumer information. This is Experts on Call, and there's more still ahead on AM 650.